Studios, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, candidate for the 13th Congressional District, one of the two Republicans in the runoff election coming up July the 14th. It's not that far away. We're already June the 4th, man. Early voting we, starts 29 June. <laughs> no, we, we've already burned up half a year here. Yeah. Uh, some of it locked down, actually, which was horrible. But anyway, that's you know, the way it is. We, we talked uh, during the break a little bit about term limits. You, you're a believer in them. I'm a firm believer in term limits. I think it's a big part of what's wrong with our country that we don't have term limits for the House and the Senate. You know, uh, I've seen it firsthand. It, it's just a, it, it's a horrible thing to see, especially in the House. You know, when folks get elected for a two-year term, and they get in there, and they spend about six months trying to figure out where they can make an impact and, and whatnot. And then uh, they spend the next six months trying to make an impact. And then they spend the last year of their term doing nothing but campaigning and raising right. money. And that is a colossal waste of taxpayers' time and money. We did not pay people to go up there and represent us so they could spend 50% of their time campaigning. But that's what happens. Well, Dr. Jackson brought his wife with him. This She's with him this morning. Uh, Jane. Jane. May I call you Jane? Yeah. Okay, Jane. And, no, I, you may not. <laughs> she might want to be called, com she might want to be called Commander. No, you may not. <laughs> yeah, Commander. <laughs> but I, I think she's got other plans for you about 10 years down the road. She so does. You, and she she's actually, not going to let you stay me, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said that you can sign that little yeah. pledge thing, but <laughs> that's, that's secondary that's, to me. <laughs> that's, been, and I, I, that's been one of my complaints about Congress in general is – they, they get elected and they stay there forever. You, but you got guys and gals that go there and, and they die in office because right. they've been there so long. Right. And that's ridiculous. It, this and should be a, this, then, then it becomes a career well, field, not, only, not public service. Not only that, but you know, having uh, members of Congress get elected every two years, to some extent, that's how the leadership takes control of you, right? Right. Because if they bring right. you in, and it's a big deal in this district right here because we are in an R plus 33. We're in the most conservative, the number one most conservative district in the yeah. entire United States. What does that mean? That means that for the most part, the Democrats don't care about this district because they know they're not going to get it. But it also right. means the Republicans don't care about this district because they know they're not going to lose it. So what happens in the House is the leadership turns the screws on congressmen, especially freshman congressmen that are in districts like this, like this because yeah. they have legislation comes up, somebody from Illinois or something that's about to lose lose their seat up there, you know, it's yeah. about to go blue, and they want you to push through something that's, you know, that's not pro-life or, you know, that's impinging on our Second Amendment rights and things like that, and they, they expect you to vote for that so they can save that seat, and uh, the, the fact that you got to get reelected in two years is, is, is something they use against you, because they can campaign against you, your own party, and run somebody against you and, and get you out, and, and that's, uh, it's just leverage that they use. And, well, I want, I want to ask you, if, if we manage to get a majority in the House and we can hang on to the Senate... Uh, and and Mr. Trump is reelected to the White House, which I'm still convinced he's going to be reelected to the second too. term. By the way, since you're here, just, and Mike can verify this, who was the first person on this radio station to predict a Donald Trump presidency? You were, sir. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> before you before got the nomination, I predicted it after the second debate. Yep. I came in here after the second debate, and I said Donald Trump be the next president. Yep. yep. And I yep. believed it the whole – I was in California driving down the highway on election night listening to, w listening to the radio, listening to Fox News on the radio results, and the whole time I was like – Gonna win. I called it. Totally. Called it. <laughs> if if we can get the majority back, how can it not be wasted? What's the best possible thing we can do next once we've got that majority back? Well, first and foremost, it, we got to get the majority. That's important. But we have got to get Republicans in there. They're going to have the president's back. That's the biggest yeah. thing. All Republicans are not created equal anymore, right? I mean, you know, you got Republicans that are, you know, they're going to get in there and they're going to support the president and help him with his agenda and do things that are going to help us become, you know, that are really going to keep America great. And then you've got Republicans in there that are just rhinos, right? And, and you know, yeah. uh, the, the, there's a big distinction here in this race right now between me and my opponent in this regard, you know. I mean, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to have the president's back. He's not. I mean, he's just not. He, he'll tell the voters that he is because he knows this is Trump country up here and he knows he's got to say those things to get the votes. But the reality is, is when he gets in there, he's not going to have the president's back and I will. So if we get in there, we get folks in there that have the president's back, we can do a lot of great things in there. We need to keep pushing our judges through and our, uh, the, uh, the, the appointments and stuff that the president's got in the Senate. And uh, we need, we need the house to, uh, you know, to keep on with the deregulatory efforts and right. we got to reform health care and we need to shore up our borders and build the wall. We got all kinds of, it. we can get it done if we get the right folks in there. I wish we had more time this morning, but we're about to run out. So if people want to learn more about the campaign, they can go to your website and find out a whole lot of information. That's right. It. It's uh, www.ronnie, R-O-N-N-Y, Jackson, 4-F-O-R, Texas, T-E-E-X-A-S, 
Texas13.com. Ronnie Jackson for Texas13.com. You can find my Facebook and Twitter uh, stuff there as well. Yeah, and if you're so moved to make a campaign contribution, that wouldn't be a bad That's thing. That's right. Either, you can find it? a link there for that too. <laughs> like there's one. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's big, bold, and flashy. Yeah. Stuff right now. <laughs> one of the one of the aspects of running for an office like this is it does take a lot of money to do it to right. campaign, and the 13th is a huge district it's a to cover. A lot of money. Yeah. And Mike, I'll tell you, I'll just tell your, your listeners real quick here. If you put me in office, I'll make you two promises. One, I will make you proud. I promise I will. Number two, everyone in this country will know who the, the congressman from the 13th Congressional District is. 13 won't be forgotten if I'm there. That's why he got my endorsement right there. Thank you very much, Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Election coming up July 14th. And again, it's Ronnie Jackson for Texas, Texas 13, 13. 13. Com. All spelled out. Yep, four, so okay. Guys, have a great rest of your Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow morning with more wake up call from the Pro Siding and Window Studios. God bless you. Adios. <laughs>